Welcome back everybody. It is my birthday and there is nothing that I would rather do than show you guys how to create this awesome looping animation right here. Okay, now I'm ready. Let's go ahead and open up Blender here. Bye bye Mr. Default Cube. Bye bye Mr. Light. Go ahead and snap to the camera view. Let's go ahead and switch to cycles here. I'm going to be rendering on my GPU. I'm going to click off of denoising and I'm going to enable the denoising data right here. Uh, go under my compositor, use nodes, just add in the denoising node real quick. Now that we have our denoising activated, we're just going to go ahead and make sure the dimensions are 1920 by 1080. I'm going to do 30 frames a second and for my end frame, I'm going to do frame 45. So it's going to be a really short looping animation. Now I actually want my camera to be an orthographic camera, so I'm gonna switch that to orthographic, and for the scale, I'm gonna go ahead and click 9.9 .9 on that. So guys, pop up this little tab right here, and make sure you copy all of these camera settings right here. I'm not gonna go through each one, just copy the location and rotation values, because we'll need them later. Let's add in a sky texture here, so instead of environment texture or color, we're actually just gonna add in a sky texture, and for the preset, we're gonna use Prethem. So now if we go to our rendered view here, you'll see we have a nice gradient background that also serves as a light source. So this is gonna be really great for our scene. Go ahead and add in a light source. We're gonna add in an area light. We are gonna make that power of 500. Size, you can keep one. And then the Z axis, we're gonna bump that up to four. Let's go ahead and add a plane in here. So we're gonna basically create everything from these planes here. So we have our plane in here. We'll tab into edit mode and we're gonna go ahead and subdivide this. And we're gonna subdivide this seven times. So pop out your little menu over here and subdivide it seven times. Now tab out of edit mode and go into your modifiers tab, add a subdivision surface modifier. We're gonna add three to both of those parts there for the viewport and the render. And then we wanna add a solidify modifier. And for our thickness, we're gonna do 0.16 here because I found that that thickness works perfectly for this. Now time for the real magic here. We're gonna add in a wave modifier and then we're gonna pull our wave modifier to the top of the stack here. I'm gonna collapse these other two and then we're gonna go through all the settings now. By default, Blender automatically will animate this for you. So if you go ahead and just play, this is what you're gonna get. It is actually pretty cool, but we're gonna go ahead and adjust this so we can manually fine tune it ourselves. So what I want you guys to do is copy these exact settings that I have over here. It took me hours to fine tune these and make them perfect, but this is exactly what you're gonna wanna do. And then later in the tutorial, we're actually gonna target our um, a different object. And what's gonna happen is when we move that object, we're gonna be able to fine tune exactly when this wave happens. As you can see, when I move this, we're, we're creating the area as a target object. So later in the tutorial, this is gonna come into handy. For now, I'm gonna reset that and I'm gonna turn off our object targeting. Later, we will set up an object to target. So the next thing we're gonna do is build our floor real quick before we go into any more animation. So I'm just gonna duplicate this and I'm going to move it on the Z axis down, just like that. I'm gonna remove our wave modifier, and then what I'm gonna do is build our floor out of this. Real quick, before we do our array modifier, I'm actually gonna add in a bevel and give that 10 segments. We're just gonna use the default bevel amount. Now what we wanna do is add in an array modifier, and we're gonna give this a factor of one. And for the count, we're gonna do 10. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna duplicate this array modifier and switch our X factor to zero and our Y factor to one. And now we have this nice grid. We just need to move it into place. So G to move, and I'm gonna hold control to keep it snapped into place. And we're gonna move it just in the center so the whole frame is filled just like that. So guys, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and select our shape here again, and I'm gonna switch the motion to X, and I'm gonna turn the Y off. That way it's waving um, in the X direction. I'm also gonna go ahead and align this to my grid. So I'm gonna click on this little Z up here to go to the top view, and I'm gonna click G to move this and hold control to snap it to one of the squares. So now if we go back, it's nicely snapped to our square here. Now if I go into my side view, I can see that there is some distance between our floor and the shape here. So G, Z to move it on the Z axis, and I'm just gonna make this barely touch just like that. I think that's perfect. That way it looks like it's actually sitting on the floor. Cool animation part, I actually just wanna go to my rendered view real quick, and I wanna add a couple simple shaders in here. For our floor, I'm just gonna add a simple metallic shader, new principle BSDF, raise the metallic up, and I'm just gonna lower the roughness quite a bit, just like that. I think that looks really nice. Now for our shape right here, we wanna add in a glass BSDF, and we can keep those settings exactly as they are, and you can go ahead and choose any color you want. I'm just gonna do like a nice light blue. I think that looks great. Let's go back into our top view here. I'm gonna click on our shape, Shift D to duplicate, 
and hold control to snap it. Okay, so now we have this shape right here. Now we wanna actually come in here and add in a cylinder so that we can have these shapes slide underneath of our waves. Now this is totally up to you how big you wanna make this. I'm gonna go ahead and just add in my cylinder and show you guys my process. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this on the X axis, 90 degrees. I'm gonna to go to my side view. I'm gonna scale this down. I'm also gonna move it so that I can size it properly. I think that looks pretty good. And we want it to be barely touching the floor, just like before. So now we have our shape right here. Go into my side view again and G, Y to bring that over. I'm also going to scale this on the Y axis to make it barely smaller than the actual shape right here. So that looks pretty good. So now that we have this, we actually want to go into our modifiers tab, add in an edge split modifier, a subdivision surface modifier, and then a bevel. Our bevel we're going to bring to the top. We're going to go ahead and give that 10 segments. Object apply scale that's starting to look really good i'm also going to give this another couple subdivisions here so we'll do three on the viewport and the render right click shade smooth and then the last step is we're actually going to copy our material from the floor here now we have this nice metallic shader on our cylinder so if you look there it is right there it looks really nice so i'm going to snap it back to the floor I'm going to move it off to the side here, and now what we're going to do is we're going to animate this and duplicate it so that it's coming in from both sides. So now that we're going to start keyframing here, I'm actually going to bring up my timeline so we can see what's going on, and I'm going to go directly to frame one. So this is where the real fine tuning comes in. So I'm actually going to go back to my top view, and I'm going to snap this cylinder to the other side. So G, holding control, I'm going to snap it to the center here so that we're in front of this first wave. And what we're going to do is we're going to animate it across like that, and then we're gonna have it shift over and get ready to move from the other side as well. So this is gonna take some fine tuning. There is no guaranteed way to get this right every single time. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my cylinder, insert a location keyframe on frame one. Now I'm gonna jump to about frame 30, go to my side view here, and I'm gonna move this on the X axis over to the other side, right about there, and I'm going to insert another location keyframe. Now, as you can see, we have the cylinder move from one side to the other. This is perfect. And what we're gonna do once we're done our animation is we're actually gonna duplicate this and mirror it to the other side. So now that we're on frame 30 here, we actually wanna move this on the Y axis to the other side. So I'm gonna to go to my top view. I'm gonna shift ahead to frame 45 and I am going to move this and snap it into place on the opposite side, just like that. Insert location. So now if we watch, we have our piece go underneath the wave and then shift over like that. So that's perfect, that is, that is exactly what we want, guys. Just to show you what this is gonna look like from the camera view, we have it shift across and then over to the other side. Now what we wanna do is we actually wanna duplicate this exact motion and I'm gonna show you how to do that without using a mirror modifier. So what you wanna do is you wanna shift D to duplicate this cylinder, press enter so that it stays exactly where it is and now we wanna add in an empty on the plane axis here. I'm gonna go into my solid view so we can see. I'm gonna go to my Z axis, okay? And then I'm gonna move this to the center between our waves here. That looks perfect. And now what I wanna do is I wanna take my newly cylinder 001, the one I just duplicated, and I actually want to shift click on the empty. I wanna parent that to the empty. And now our empty controls our cylinder. And all we have to do is rotate it on the Z axis 180 degrees and now if we go ahead and play this back we're gonna have the exact animation on both sides and as you can see it's perfectly looping we can go ahead and fine-tune that later but now these animations are linked so this is perfect this is exactly what we want and now we just have to move our waves so that they get out of the way of the cylinder another thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go in here and I'm gonna change the color of one of these waves so I'm just gonna duplicate our material and I'm just gonna change this to sort of a more green color might not be exactly what I had in the thumbnail, but you get the idea. You guys can make these colors whatever you want. So this is where the real magic comes in. This is where we actually create this satisfying part of the animation. Remember earlier when I showed you that we had the area light controlling where the wave was gonna go? Well, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna add an object under our scene. You can use an empty as well, and it's actually gonna control where the wave passes through. I'm gonna go ahead and add a cube in here. I'm just gonna scale it down. I'm gonna move it all the way over here. So now it's underneath of our floor, okay? 
And what we're going to do is we're going to move it from this side to this side. And we're going to keyframe it. And we're going to target the cube as our object for our wave modifier. So real quick, I'm just going to show you how this works. I'm going to click on our first wave, go into the modifiers tab. And you see where it has this little object area right here? You want to click the eyedropper tool and click on the cube. Now you see how the thing just laid flat like that? Watch what happens when I move it. See what happens? It moves out of the way of the cube. It took me a while to figure this out, but since I did, now we can easily animate this exactly how we want it. So I'm going to start it over here, right about there. I'm going to go back to frame one, insert a location keyframe. I'm going to head over to frame, I believe it was 30, move it all the way over until the wave lays flat again, right about there. Insert a location keyframe. And now if we watch through, you can see the wave almost perfectly moves out of the way. Now this is where you need to fine tune these adjustments. So I'm gonna zoom in here so we can fine tune everything. Now it's just a matter of getting your keyframes right. I'm gonna select our cylinder here because it doesn't seem to be going quite fast enough. And I'm just gonna pull frame 30 over to frame 25. And now let's just see how that looks. That's starting to look a lot better. It's almost perfect. And then we're gonna go back to our wave, or sorry, our cube that's controlling the wave. And we're also gonna give that a little bit more space to work with. It's all about adjusting these keyframes to perfectly fit your animation. Almost perfect. As you can see, this is gonna take some fine tuning, so I'm gonna come back when I have the perfect numbers. Guys, it looks like I found the perfect solution, so what I did is I basically moved my keyframes for the cylinder. Uh, we have the start is actually on frame four, and the end is on frame 23, so as you can see, it does not touch the wave anymore, and this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. The only thing that we have left to do is we actually have to copy our animation data over to the other cylinder so that it does the exact same thing. So I'm gonna select our opposite cylinder, shift click the cylinder that we just modified, control L, and I'm gonna go ahead and link animation data. And now, if we go to the other side, we should be getting the same result. Now the only thing is they are moving at the same speed, but we need an opposite object to move the other wave. So I hope you guys are following this, but as you can see, we have our one cube controlling the first wave. The other wave is not moving at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna duplicate that bottom cube and we're gonna reverse its motion to target the other wave. Go ahead and select the cube, Shift D to duplicate. And then all we wanna do is we wanna actually reverse these keyframes here. So I'm gonna select our keyframes S, Z, negative one. And then I'm gonna drag them backwards so that we have our keyframe starting here. And as you can see, they're moving opposite ways now, which is perfect. And now all we have to do is select our other wave that's not moving right here. And we have to target our second cube. And now if you watch, they're perfect. So this is exactly what we wanted. This should be a full loop. Let me go ahead and snap to the camera view to make sure. This looks perfect. This is literally exactly what we want. We have our waves acting the way we want them. The cylinders are passing through underneath. And now literally the only thing left to do is just fine tune some of the colors and go ahead and render. So things are looking really good. I just want to add another detail. I want to go into my camera and I actually want to target for the depth of field. I want to target that middle empty because that's kind of where our focal point of the whole scene is. And then for our f-stop, I'm going to turn that down to 0.4. That looks like a little bit too much. Maybe raise it up to F4. All right, so F4 looks pretty good. We have a nice blurred background, but we're still focused on the main subject. So that's it, guys. Uh, we have our full animation here. So I'm gonna play it back so you can see it, even though we are in rendered view. This is your full loop here. So now I hope you learned a little something about the wave modifier. Uh, it's super useful. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, comment down below what you thought of this tutorial and what you guys would like to see in the next one. Until then, I'm Kenny Phases. Take it easy, and I will see you in the next tutorial.